Hi, I'm Cynthia Van Shamelhout. In a world where events impact our lives, what events awaken your soul? Today, we'll share with you some of the most life-altering experiences of ordinary people with extraordinary faith, the kind of faith that rescues, strengthens, and provides. Welcome to Stories of Faith. When people think of their childhood, it usually brings back a lot of wonderful memories of innocence and wonder. But for the man you're about to meet, his childhood is one that brings back pain and sadness, memories that have been locked away for decades. I'm Brother Tony Smith. I grew up in Lodi, California. You know, you're, you're dealing with a, a very young heart, uh, your conscience, what you're being taught, what you're being told. Uh, you were to feel and know that God was good. But there were a lot of unusual, not good things happening. And what I noticed was, as long as my dad had been drinking his Red Mountain wine, he was a very friendly person. He was able to settle his demons. But the moment he was clear-headed, he was um, a very sad man, a very angry man. And I think my, my father's philosophy was, if he can straighten me out, my other two brothers would follow. So I think every day I got a whooping, almost every day. Uh, my father would come home and my mom would unload and my dad would in turn unload on me. And uh, I thought, gee, you know, this is, this is intense. This is intense. Survival. It's either you would fall in your mind on the side of you're a condemned man and a substandard child or you would cling to anything that would give you comfort back into a, a comfort zone of your mind, you know. Troubles in the Smith family home would only get worse. This time, Tony's mom sought help from a local Catholic church, and the response she received may surprise you. My mom started to realize that my, my dear dad was um, not being faithful. This eventually led to my parents seeking uh, spiritual advice from the priests. Where we are, this is uh, Lodi, California. Mm -hmm. uh, this is where uh, my uh, Catholic side of the family uh, in Lodi continued their life until uh, they broke apart, split apart. That was also a sour turnout as well. I remember my mom coming home uh, crying that she had to sign documents, the annulment documents, that uh, categorized her, you know, uh, in the uh, terminology used for dogs, you know, a female dog. And my mom was appalled. 
And it, it was, it was um, a devastating for me in the sense that you looked to uh, Catholicism or the Catholic Church as a uh, safe haven or a place to turn, a place for spiritual advice. Of course, later on in life, uh, I, 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 I read from the Bible that what God has joined together, let no one put asunder or separate. And uh, so one day after they must have talked it all over, my dad comes in with a handful of silver dollars. You know, I was like, give me those dollars, you know. But what he had to say was, was not very good, that he was leaving, he was not planning to come back, and, you know, this is your dad. He's not going to come back. I think I started crying, and my brother started crying, because I was crying. And my father probably cried, too. Who wouldn't? But I, I think my father just faced the reality that, you know, that he didn't have the strength enough to do by himself. My mom was left to fend for herself and for us. It was Darwiner schnitzel hot dog and a Coke for a dollar. So there we were, Darwiner schnitzels, eating dinner. <laughs> it's very hard. My mom... What a trooper, what a trooper. And so I, I learned to drive at a very young age and is, you know, trying to be like dad. Well, I only know one speed uh, to drive a car or motorcycle and, and that was as fast as I could go. I think I had a, um, uh, my DMV readout for as many tickets as I had got. But it was also not your ordinary kind of road rage. It wasn't because of heavy traffic. It was because of the tragedy of childhood and uh, the most intense kind of anger. And uh, in the absence of my father, in the presence of my mom, doing everything that she, she could do. Well, I felt dad in me. I felt it. And it scared the, the pants off of me because I saw what dad was capable of. I saw and I had all the vocabulary of my dad in my mind, in my, that anger in my heart. So it was transcending to me, that same spirit, whatever kind of evil spirit that was, it was affecting all of us. When Stories of Faith returns, see how Tony's repressed memories from his childhood slowly makes its way into his early adult life. Stay with us. Welcome back to Stories of Faith. Earlier, we met Tony Smith from Lodi, California. Some of us may be able to relate to his stories of a troubled childhood, but see how God intervened in his life. I, I seem to have extraordinary strength during those times. I, I had no fear. Uh, of anything. My father seemed to have beat it out of me. You know, I think it was, it was beating the fear out of me and needing the strength. And I would say there was divine intervention giving me the strength to keep pushing forward or to keep picking me up because I was on a road of self-destruct. 
one early morning, my friend wakes me up. And what does he want to do? He wants to race me on my motorcycle. We get on our motorcycles and we go like a bat out of hell as fast as we can go. I can't put on the brakes. I can't control my hands. And the, all of this is happening so, so fast. And I realize that if I don't stop, I'm going to go right into traffic and die. And after a few minutes, I start to move. I start to get up. And uh, I'm trying to figure out what's broken, what's torn, what's scratched. Nothing. Nothing is wrong with me. Nothing. I'm dirty. I'm dusty. From that uh, time on, I realized in the past I had never ever been so lucky, and I uh, decided from that point on to stop hurting myself, to stop uh, uh, treating myself so badly. To let go, to start loving myself, because God loved me. God loved me enough to orchestrate his angels to be with me, to save me, and it seemed time, to, time and time again, our God was coming to my rescue. It was time for me to stop all the anger, all the hatred get rid of it. There's no more place for it. The past was that was haunting me, it had to be dead. It had to die. It had to be a part of the past. I could no longer live in the past. I got to get out of town. Something has to change. And uh, there's, the, uh, there's the TV. I'm, I'm crashed on the couch. And here comes the uh, Navy recruitment advertisement. And uh, I thought, this feels good. This idea feels good. I think this is right. Now, with a clearer perspective on life, a new chapter begins for Tony. This will be the start of a spiritual journey and his search for the truth. And you were just a number. You were military property. And um, there you were, and marching in line, um, eating the same time, sleeping the same time, cleaning the same time. But uh, I'm trying to stay busy with my studies. They offer martial arts. I, I, I try to do that. I try to exercise. So uh, exercise-wise, I'm doing OK. Uh, School-wise, OK. But my spiritual life is suffering. So I. I start to venture out outside the base in Great Lakes, Illinois. And then there was this religious organization called the L.R. Davis and the Good News Singers, Great Lakes, Illinois. Now, this is around 1978. And they invited me up. They were a non-denominational, uh, basically Protestant group. And uh, they uh, were so kind, uh, donuts, coffee, free, uh, occasional out to breakfast, uh, got me uh, reading the Bible, um, could point out some things which were wrong with the Catholic Church. And of course, it was, seemed to be a very positive environment. Uh, came, came time that they said, well, you know, uh, according to the Bible, you should be baptized. Well, I was convinced. So there I was. I was baptized as this Protestant uh, uh, born again. And uh, 
so we went back. I, I guess it was probably on a Saturday. The next day I showed up at the, uh, the venue for worship in Great Lakes, Illinois. And, uh, you know, I, I made my offering and so on and so forth. And uh, they called me aside after everything was over and told me that, well, I need to offer 10%. So I said, I'm sorry, I can't. I'll give you what I can, but not 10%. Oh, my goodness. They told me about a week later, after verifying that I w really wasn't going to give 10%, that I was no longer welcome. I could not come back. And I go, oh, my gosh. They were more interested in just the money, not my salvation, not my spiritual well-being, it was the cash. But I was hurt. I was really hurt in the sense that I gave it my all. From the heart, I made these decisions. Uh, this was nothing that I took lightly. And I, I vowed to myself I would never allow this to happen again. I would be very careful uh, in the future. And I didn't know a lot about the Bible, except that here is the Bible. I have the Bible. And I will be more careful... Everything that, you know, you may say, I'm going to check it if it's biblical. So I began a prayer. So I made a, I guess it was a deal with God. I said, dear God, I want to make uh, what you uh, need for me what I want. That's what I want. What you need for me, whatever it is, that's what I want because I can't find it. And I don't want to make any more mistakes. So the Church of Christ is the kingdom of God which everyone should seek first. Uh, and this was very clear. Uh, take it or leave it. This is the true church. He, he attempted in no way to mesmerize me with uh, mushy words to try to make an appeal to an emotion or whatever. You know, it was purely an appeal to logic and the Bible. When it came time uh, for the offering, the end of the worship service, here comes the, uh, the uh, offering pouches to collect my offering. They pass me up. They don't collect my offering. Everything was good until that very moment I didn't understand. So I said, well, you need to talk to the minister about what, what your questions are. So Brother David Abad made time for me to answer my questions after the worship service. And I go, you know, they didn't collect my offering. And Brother David goes, well, because you're not a member yet, you haven't gone under uh, Bible studies to know God's words regarding offering, how to offer, how your offering will be used. It was like that. I'm going, this man, this church, is more concerned with God's word and my salvation than just getting my money. And then he goes, this is another clincher, he goes, do you want to know? Would you like to know God's laws and commandments concerning offering? I said, yes, please, yes. That was my first lesson, my formal uh, lesson, one-on-one -on -one with uh, the minister. And I was just so excited. I had been praying for the longest time for this moment because not only was it an appeal to logic and knowledge according to God's will, it was an overwhelming feeling of, my son, you're in the right place. I'm answering your prayer. When we come back, see the conclusion of this compelling story of what began as a tumultuous childhood and now to a life of hope and promise. Stay with us. Welcome back to Stories of Faith. You've been following the story of Tony Smith, 
After being introduced to the Church of Christ, Tony was so enlightened that no matter where the Navy took him, God's words remained in his heart, and his admiration for the Church grew even more. You know, if you, if you look at where uh, my journey has been and what I've been wanting and my heart's desire and what I don't want, this was so where I needed to be and what I wanted. But my ship was bound to move. I was not going to be staying there. And my ship did move. Brother Jose Ventilation, he set me up with a, like a little, uh, a little booklet, a booklet that I could get my, my lessons uh, taught to me wherever I would go. So it was a good thing because I had a chance to see the unity of the church. Wherever I went, the same doctrine, the same method of conducting worship service, the same message wherever I went, it was fabulous, just fabulous. I was baptized in the local congregation of Oakland, 1981, March 18. One of the greatest days of my life. You know, that's the leap of faith. If, if you are willing to save my life and give me my life back, then you know exactly what to do with my life. This life is no longer mine. My life is yours. The life that I no longer own is not mine. It made it easier to surrender over to God for the holy ministry. Welcome to The Message, a study of the words of God as written in the Bible, being brought to you by the Iglesia de Cristo, the Church of Christ today. You know, they've I'm made Johnny songs Martin. and poetry Smith. about love. We're talking about love of the ministry. And it's a journey in discovering love. You need to ask for more love. You can even run out of love. But God's love is always there to remind you, you need more of His love. Participate in the race. <coughs> but to finish the race of our faith and even win with the blessing. And the other thing, too, I would say, is God's willingness and trust and entrusted to you when you yourself maybe didn't believe in what you could do, but God did. And in the ministry, you'll also encounter the opposite of love. If love, you're dealing with our almighty God, you're also going to deal with the enemy of our faith that brings sometimes sorrows, pains, sufferings. But the greatest um, uh, compensation or love of God that makes you say, this has to be the greatest aspect of ministry are the miracles within the ministry left and right there's miracles everywhere brethren asking for prayer difficulties that they're in sicknesses that they have but I have witnessed life returned life extended sorrows disappear wounds healed When you see the smiles of the brethren, when you see uh, brethren's faces come from a, a change from immense sadness and sorrow because what they're facing, they cannot manage it. 
for them to be a recipient of a miracle in their life because of your ministerial function. All you were was an instrument of God. You just prayed for them. You just administered anointing of oil. You just read the Bible. And our Heavenly Father did the rest, healing them, restoring love and solidarity to the family. All of those things, souls being baptized within the church, all races of people, white, black, brown, whatever other color God created people, you know, you're, you know that's, that's happiness to me because you cannot buy that. Oh, I could go on and on. Those are uh, the joys and happiness of, of ministry. Through Brother Tony's story, we've seen that a person's tragic past can often lead one to God's greater plans and a promising future. I'm Cynthia Van Shamelhout. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.